Hello? Can you see me? Hello? No? You can't see me? Ah, that's better. Now you can see me. Hi, I'm Martin from the Ontario Science Center. Hold on a second. Wow, these things are amazing. Have you ever wondered how cameras capture the world and how our eyes can see? Today we're going to explore light and optics using materials that you have at home. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get going. All right, so you're wondering how cameras and our eyes capture images. Let's have a closer look at a camera. You can see that there is a curved piece of glass. And when you look at your eyes in the mirror, you can see a transparent material that is curved as well. And magnified glasses too. They have a curve to them. They're not flat. Maybe that's the answer to how to make images. What do you think? Would it be possible to create an image with just one magnifying glass like that? So I turn off the light and the only light in the room is from the computer monitor on that side. And there's a picture of Daisy that I took earlier today. And I have the magnifying glass from before and uh, you check this out. I'm holding it like that, facing the computer monitor. And as I move the lens away, we can suddenly see something appear here on the cardboard. There you go. There's an upside down image of Daisy on the cardboard. Wow, that was amazing. So it is possible to make an image with just a simple magnifying glass that we bought for $1. But how does it actually work? How does a lens do that? So what are some of the things that we know that magnifying glasses can do? We know that they can magnify things and we know that you can burn leaves in the sunlight by holding it at a certain distance. So bring the magnifying glass closer or farther away from a piece of paper and you will see that it will make a smaller or bigger spot. If you don't have a magnifying glass, here's another way to do it. All you need is a glass and water and a piece of cardboard that you cut some cuts into it so that the piece of glass fits through like that. And I fill it to the top and then you can have light come through and you can see what happens on the other side. Exactly like what would happen in a magnifying glass. And what you can see is that the light converges into a point. We call that the focal point. And the distance between the center of the glass and the focal point is called the focal length. And that's an expression of how curved the glass is. You could think of a ray of light as a piece of string. It starts somewhere and it continues. If it doesn't hit anything, it will just continue on forever. Unless it interacts with a material. It gets refracted, changes its direction, or it gets reflected like it does off a mirror. You might have heard that people say we can see the moon, even though it's not a source of light because it reflects light. So if the moon reflects light, does Daisy reflect light? Do we all reflect light? All right, so here's a challenge. We all know that light bounces off mirrors, but can you make light bounce off things that are not like a mirror? Turn on your flashlight, bring your flashlight close to a colored object, and then take a piece of paper and see if you can get a reflection onto the paper that has the color of the object. Why don't you pause the video and try this at home? So I'm assuming you were able to bounce off light off a colored object and catch it. Everything that we can see has photons coming from it. You see me right now because there is light right here that bounces off me and gets into that camera. So I can hear you say, hold on Martin, 
If it's true that you can capture images of things that don't glow with a lens, how come I can't see them? You walk around your room, you're trying to capture images of the room, and it doesn't work. It only works with glowing things. Why do you think that is? Remember what I had to do to make an image of Daisy on here? Two things. First, I had to turn off all the lights and I created a shield like that to block the light from around the lens to hit the screen. Otherwise, it would have been very hard to see the image of Daisy. To stop the other light from interfering with the image that you form, you need to build a box. When you look at the camera, it really is a box. So the box basically prevents other four sources of light interfering with the image that that one lens is forming. Let's have another look at our glass of water and the flashlight. Place the flashlight at the side of the cardboard and move it up and down and watch where the focal point is. So there is a beautiful geometry to the refraction of the glass. No matter where you place the flashlight, the focal point is always exactly opposite from the flashlight, as if there is an invisible line connecting the focal point, the flashlight, and the center of the glass. They're always in line. And that is a key to understanding how lenses capture images. So this last experiment is my favorite one. For it to work, you need to have a room that is completely dark. If you have a room in your house that has no windows where you can close the doors, that's perfect. And preferably do it at night. It's much easier to keep a room really, really dark. What you need is a uh, box of cardboard. You need a source of light. Any device with a bright screen would work. So if you put a picture on and put a really bright image on, and um, that's great. Um, for our experiment, I'll be using this light bulb here. You take your cardboard box and you make a hole into it, maybe the size of your magnifying glass. Cover up the hole with some aluminum foil. Most boxes have little corners where light can go in or out. Cover that, those up with a black piece of tape or something that blocks the light from going through. Anything black works the best. Put your phone onto the brightest setting and play something on the screen that will prevent the phone from going asleep. And tape it to the back of the box, opposite from where you put the aluminum foil and tape it into place there. And then we will close the lid. And then you need to put the aluminum foil or something over the top that stops all light leaks from coming out. All right, so I want to show you how to do this, but you're going to do that in a completely dark room. As you can see, the uh, light bulb inside of our box is on, and you would have your phone or another object with a bright screen um, playing something where the screen will not turn off, and have it on the brightest setting. Cover the front of the hole with some aluminum foil. So when you do that in your dark room, um, have it about a meter away from the screen and wait for about a minute for your eyes to get fully adapted to the darkness and then make a single hole with the toothpick. In the dark, this is what it'll look like. An upside down image of the light bulb. And here is the image of my phone screen through the pinhole. Now, why does that work? We have the cardboard box we have the light bulb, we have the aluminum foil on the screen. We make a single hole and now almost all of the light rays get caught inside of the box, except for the light rays that make it through the hole. So you can think of the light rays as straight pieces of string that go from the surface of the light bulb to the screen. And of course here they would reflect it. And that is true for every point on the light bulb. And because they all cross over inside of the hole, we get an upside down representation of the light bulb on the screen. So what about if we make a second hole? What will we see then? We see two light bulbs. Three, four, five, six. Every hole makes its own image of the light bulb. Now here's the cool thing. Using the magnifying glass, 
you can combine all these images into a single brighter image of the light bulb. Now again, right here it doesn't work because we're in a bright room. Um, if the lights are off, this works really well. Make a big hole with your finger. What do you see now? When you look at the hole, you could say this hole is the sum of an infinite number of tiny little holes. And each little hole we know makes an image. So in a way, this glowing light over here that we see on the screen is made up of images from the light bulb. And we can use our magnifying glass to capture that image. So how does the magnifying glass lead to a geometrical representation on the screen. Remember the light rays that went through the center of the glass of water? Wherever the location of the magnifying glass is, some rays go straight through the center of the magnifying glass. Hence, there is a representation of the light bulb over here on the screen as well. And of course, all the other rays that go through the hole get refocused, refracted by the magnifying glass onto the same point. The magnifying glass takes all these different light rays from every spot and combines them into one spot here. If the magnifying glass is in the right position. If it's further away, it just turns into a blur. I think we figured it out. Great. All right, and we're back. We figured out how cameras and our eyes capture images. And we answered many other different questions, but there were also a lot of questions that we did not touch upon. For example, how do cameras and our eyes see color? If you look at below in the description, you can see a link to a document where we have an activity that helps you explore how TVs and other screens produce colors. But now it's your turn to ask test repeat with everyday materials that you find in your home.